So what do you, what do you know about the Lord Mayor? No, I don't know. <laughs> because I never see him. <laughs> Would it surprise you to find out that the Lord Mayor of Oxford is actually a woman? It's a woman. A woman. Be honest, I never see him. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Elise Benjamin. I grew up in London. I moved here in 1993. Um, not, nothing to do with the university or anything, it was just um, we moved here for work and just launched into the community. I'd already been very active in politics from my mid-teens, starting with campaigning against planning applications that were going to destroy my local area. Um, I'd been an environmentalist and a peace campaigner from quite a young age as well, mostly through my father who was one of the first members of CND. I uh, didn't realise that I could go further and actually get directly involved until I was about 20 and at college and um, launched into campaigning in a, a very successful European election campaign that sort of hit the ground running and from, from then on started campaigning to get elected. Do you know what the mayor does? carries out some ceremonial bits and pieces, but nothing I've seen lately as such. So being Lord Mayor of Oxford is quite interesting. I mean, it's a civic role, which means there are no powers. So I, I've, I've met, I've, I've been in everywhere from tea in the back garden of a house in Blackbird Lees with a load of mums and their kids to tea in my parlour at the town hall with the president of Mongolia. So it's quite a varied role um, and it's a real honour to do it. And it's not something as a green that sits naturally with what what I believe in, which is that we're all equal and it's and a very very strong sense of, of democracy and, and empowerment. But it, but in Oxford especially, it is such an honour. Um, you're chosen to be mayor because you're the longest serving councillor who hasn't already been mayor, and so it, it's it's a fantastic role. Uh, but I I don't think anyone could do it for more than a year because it's so busy. I think the, the interesting challenges for me are um, I can I can talk to people. I mean, I rep us wards in the city, so a lot of poverty, but then we have academics and professionals as well. So very mixed. So I'm used to talking to a whole host of different people, and, and that's that's how I was brought up anyway. And it's very useful, I think, for for as a city councillor to know how a broad cross section of the public think. Because ultimately, when we make decisions as councillors, we're making decisions for everyone. The, the role of mayor is a civic role, so it's a non-political role, but I'm still a city councillor. But as mayor, I can set an example, and I'm certainly doing what I can. So having a charity dinner that, where all the food is sourced locally, obviously, is one really brilliant way of, of showing people how easy it is. Um, obviously, the other one for me is cycling, and, and I've, I've, I've always cycled anyway. But it's, such a, it's so easy in Oxford. And what I'm finding is wherever I go as mayor, it doesn't matter who I speak to, there'll always be someone who'll say, it's brilliant you're cycling, it's great you're setting a really good example. Um, and I've also had people saying that because I, because I feel that, you know, as a, as a councillor you represent everyone and we have such a broad mix of people in the city, I, what I wanted to do was, was set an example of being as approachable as possible and, and I've had a lot of positive feedback from people about that. She's, she's just genuinely interested at a grassroots level as opposed to kind of being on a pedestal. So the only, the, the only other role that I have as mayor is to chair the full council meetings. This is where all the councillors meet. Um, and it's an interesting role to be in because I'm there chairing as the mayor but I'm also there as a city councillor. And, I, and, and you have to kind of separate out the two. So I'm still allowed to participate in debates and vote. Um, as mayor, I have a casting vote, which I really hope I don't ever have to use because if you, if you have to use a casting vote, there's something wrong with democracy in the decision-making process. And I've managed so far, aside from the fact that the seat is much too big for me and I fall off it during the meetings. When I'm at home, I've got a little craft room in the basement. It's just a box room, but I tend to sit there and I do jewelry making mostly and I make my own beads and and have a bit of fun. I'm also quite a lot of other interests outside. Not doing as many of them as I, as mayor because I'm so busy, but um, the, t the main things that I do, I've got a lot of good social network of friends in Oxford, um, but also I, I go to a lot of live music. One of the interesting things about being a female mayor is um, in some like, councils, you will be called Lady Mayoress, but in, in Oxford, it's definitely the Lord Mayor. And that does confuse people. And I've, I've learned that it, if I'm not called Lord Mayor, if I'm called Lady Mayoress, then some, then, and I'm at an event, 
then there will be people who will be looking out to find out where my husband the mayor is. But um, if I was married or living with a woman, she would be my lady mayoress. But my partner is male and he has to be my consort. Um, the lady mayoress wears a small gold chain, but as the consort, he's only allowed to wear a little medal. So there is a, it's funny, it's a sort of a, a strange tradition, no one can tell me why. And, and the little bit of fun for me is the fact that my consort has to walk one pace behind me whenever we're out on official duty.